Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of Board Games Hitting My Table. So in this series I take a look at all of the games that I've been playing over the last couple of weeks and these are all games that are not new to me. Uh, before I get started on the games I've been playing, I want to give a shout out to the show's sponsor, Keyender.co.uk, who are my go-to online retailer here in the UK. And if you use my link in the show notes or the QR code, then you can get 5% off your first order. But let's get on with the games. I'm going to start with probably the biggest feature game that I've played over the last couple of weeks. This is Wallenstein. So Wallenstein is like a hybrid Euro war game where, of course, you're trying to control over a majority of these regions. And you can do that by you know, going on conquests, um, moving your troops into enemy regions, trying to fight them. But I love the way that the combat system works in this game through this cube tower where you're going to throw all your troops in the cube tower, all your enemy troops in the cube tower, and then depending on who comes through and filters through that cube tower, because some of them are going to get stuck, they're going to pair off and then kill each other. And whoever's left standing will be the winner. I love that system. It means that if sometimes things aren't going your way, they'll get stuck in the tower and come back and help you later. Adds a lot of interesting dynamics and can really kind of you know, spice things up later. Um, we had a very good game of this. You know, this is quite a hard game to pull away from the pack because the increments in which you score are so small. Um, and it all came down to this kind of one micro decision on who won this game. So I was actually generally doing quite well. Um, I had a complete domination of one of the regions. But that meant that people were starting to kind of gang up on me because, you know, I was probably running away with it. And then just as the, um, the game was about to come to a conclusion, I was just about to kind of go into a region and con you know, conquer it because it had a, a valuable palace there, which is going to get you some more points. But the player order managed to intercept that and one of my opponents just snuck in and killed my army before I could prey on a weaker army. Just such an interesting game. One of the strongest examples of how kind of um, initiative and player order affects the outcome of the game. Just a great one. Holds up remarkably well. That is Wallenstein and still going strong for me and I'm really looking forward to playing it more and more. I also played another game of Biblios. So funnily enough, I think Biblios featured on my last episode of uh, Board Games Hitting My Table. And um, before that play, I hadn't played this one in probably, you know, a year and a half, two years. And um, suddenly we got the bug for this one again. We had another great game. And I mean, I've never had a bad game of Biblios. It's that good. One of the best filler games out there. I call it a Mount Rushmore style game and definitely an essential. This is like a... A set collection style game, but you're doing it based on this almost like a push your luck and then bidding system um, based on these suits. And then these suits are going to correlate to a, a dice value. And um, it's always one of these games where you think you're doing well um, in certain fields and you end up losing them or you're not doing well in certain fields and you end up winning them and so on. So it has a lot of excitement and it's always one of the best kind of end game reveals out there. That is Biblios, just a fantastic one. I played a three-player game of Modern Art, which probably isn't the optimal player count, but you know, I was, we had somebody uh, request to play this one, which I'm, you know, I'm more than happy to play any time because I love Reiner Knizia bidding games. Um, Modern Art, I'm normally not too good at this game because it's quite hard to do all the maths in your head, as in how much do I need to spend to get this artwork? How much money am I, I going to give to my opponent? Therefore, who's getting the net gain? Um, and for some reason in this game, I managed to have everything just fall on at my feet, really. Um, I managed to have a good hand of cards. I've um, always managed to get good bids on my cards. So even when I wasn't winning the, um, you know, the bids, I was still making good money. And I ended up having quite a decisive victory, which isn't normally the case because, again, the, the obscurity and the um, kind of obtuse nature of the game makes it difficult to map things out. But yeah, I, I love this game. It's very good. And I'm just narrowly missed out on my top 100 this year. That is Modern Art. Um, played a, another game of Caesar's Empire. So Caesar's Empire was my favourite game I played last month. One of my favourite games I've played in recent, recent memory, actually. A lovely family weight style game as you're trying to build these paths and routes on this map of Europe. Um, you do that by placing these troops on these roads. And when you reach a new city, you're going to collect a number of tokens. Some of them are basically like set collection, but some of them are kind of color coded. And your best color of each city or type is going to um, add to your end game score. But then you trace a route back your, to your path back to Rome and get a point for everyone you cross through. But that also applies to your opponents. So you can piggyback of other people's efforts and try to squeeze more points out of your turn. Yeah, definitely I'm going to be, a, oh, I'm almost certain this is going to be a top 10, maybe even a top five game of 2022 for me. Um, just, yeah, brilliant. I love it. That is Caesar's Empire. More games. Oh, again, no, another game I've not had a bad experience with yet. 
played a three player game of My Farm Shop. This one regularly gets talked about on my show because it's it's one of those games that nobody ever talks about. It has that Machi Koro space space feel to it where you're rolling dice and triggering different cards in this example. And then you're getting resources and then some of the um, you know, denominations will give you um, the ability to trade in those resources to get victory points. And it's all about building a nice little engine. I love how every single turn you have to completely change your engine because you're forced to, uh, to play these cards. So everything's always again in change and in flux. And you know, normally I feel like I'm quite good at this game, but I've never actually managed to win a game of my farm shop until this time. And funnily enough, I thought this was my worst, um, you know, showing, I suppose. I didn't feel like I did terribly well, but I ended up just squeezing the, the win there. So yeah, I can finally say I've, um, I've won a game of my farm shop. But yeah, despite, again, I always mention this, the horrible, horrible artwork, which just looks disgusting. Um, the game is fantastic and one of the best family weight games out there. And I still love it. You know, I've played it so many times now and I still have that urge to get it back to the table, which is always a great sign so that is my farm shop and a couple of smaller games now we played a uh, three no sorry four player game of six nymphs so i played this with my family one of the only games that my dad will play with us i'm always good played a couple of games back to back classic card game about kind of I'm trying to math out who's going to play what card at the right time and uh, hopefully avoid collecting cards because cards are negative points. Um, yeah, an absolute bona fide essential. That is Six Nymphed, classic by uh, Wolfgang Kramer. And the same applies to No Thanks, really. Another game that I'll get out with my family, you know, non-gamer members. And um, yeah, we had a good time with this one as well. I um, mean, yeah, normally my luck with No Thanks is fantastic, but I had a couple of really bad games and didn't do too well. But yeah, love this one still. And um, it's been quite a while since I played that one, so it's nice to get it back to the table. And the same applies to Push, another game where, which I will happily play with my dad, you know, a complete non-gamer, and he enjoys this one. I love this gamble of trying to you know, collect cards, almost in like a blackjack fashion where you can't play cards of the same number or colour in the same pile, and you have three piles to play with. And as soon as you do, you're going to go bust and roll this dice here. And then basically you have cards that you've collected that are not safe and are vulnerable to be lost if you roll a certain face of this die. Um, but you can actually spend your whole time to bank them and keep those points safe and, you know, cement them into your final scoring. One of my favourite Pushy Luck games, um, it might have just been um, supplanted now by um, Rapido or also known as Escape. But still, I think this one is, uh, is really good. That is Push. And also played a three player game, which, you know, not this is a, a game that actually scales pretty well up to, I think it's eight, there you go, like one to eight players. This is um, Long Shot, the dice game. Um, again, there's been a little gap here between I played, or between my last play and this play, and I had a blast with it. I think it's such a wonderful game. Um, I was kind of starting to think, you know, am I waning on this one? Because my urge to play it wasn't massive um, but I thought you know let's get it back to the table let's see what my thoughts are and I was straight back on track and it reminded me about how much I love this one really fun kind of a racing and bidding game as you're moving these horses around this track by rolling um, a pair of dice one of them, one of them dice is going to show how far the horses move and one is going to show which horse moves but there's lots of other things you can do, such as you know, betting on the horses. You can unlock these concessions, which will give you little bonuses to you know, get, give you free bids or let you buy horses for end game scoring and so on. It's just a, a wonderful game. And I actually do quite like it at lower, lower player counts because um, I think with the higher player counts, it's a little bit meticulous on how you resolve things because turn order is quite important. And when it comes to like buying horses, etc., whereas in a three player game, you can like do it as a, you know, a flick of a switch. You can work out all the admin. So yeah, really going strong. That is long shot the dice game. Um, a couple of other games that I've played that aren't actually, um, on or in my own collection. So the first one I played is King Domino Origins. So we had a kind of like 20 minutes or so at the end of a games night um, before we were about to go home. And um, we thought, what, what should we play? And we got a game of King Domino Origins to the table. I actually really like this one. I think it's quite a charming little game. You know, no, no bells or whistles. It's just a little kind of five by five grid you're building with these domino tiles, trying to score multipliers based on the terrains, etc. Um, I can see why it was a big hit and it's definitely got that mass appeal. And I had a good game of it. You know, I did enjoy this one. And I also played a three player game of Sonora, which is a game that had a little bit of buzz maybe a year or two ago. This is a dexterity 
almost like a roll and write game or a or kind of a flick and write, I suppose it was described as, as you're flicking these discs on this little board. And then depending on where your discs land, you are going to get to play a little mini game. And they're all kind of this tr traditional, you know, little pencil and pen mini games. Um, and it's, you know, I actually think the mini games are okay. They're not amazing, but they're not bad either. Um, but that dexterity part of the game, I'm, I kind of think, oh, it's such a missed opportunity because I think this... It's got that kind of DNA for a or potential for a great game there, you know, if you have some kind of like shuffleboard or something. But this one, it's like whenever you flick a disc, you can almost guarantee to get it where you want it. And it's so easy to achieve what you want to achieve. So, I think, yeah, a little bit of a missed opportunity there. And, it, you know, I think it's OK. I don't think it's bad, but I don't think it's great either. But, yeah, it was fine. That is um, that is Sonora. So that's it, really. That's all the games that I've been playing over the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, kind of a short video here, but hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, please be sure to hit like and subscribe to my channel and check out my other content, too. Um, I'll be continuing doing my top 100 countdown over the next, you know, few weeks. So um, yeah, hopefully you've been enjoying that series and I hope you join me for the rest of it. But for everybody else, I'll see you next time on Chairman of the Board. Bye bye.